doing some more nest structures today. Uh, if you didn't catch my last video, I'll link it into this video below in the description. You can go back look at it where I talked about uh, you know hen mallard houses, uh, goose platforms, wood duck boxes. Today we're doing something a little different. Uh, we're out doing a, a completely new structure. Uh, it's a research project. Hopefully it helps. This is going to be for our diving ducks. Redheads, canvasbacks, ruddies, possibly scop. So anyways, uh, we got the guy here that's running the project. Uh, I'll, have, I'll have him here in just a sec to tell you about it. Well, the Wasatch Wigeons have teamed up with uh, the Utah Division of Wildlife and uh, the local managers of some of the management areas and has allowed us to do the this research project on the WMAs. Guys this is uh, this is Tate he is with the Wasatch Wigeons and uh, this is his research project. Yes. So, so redheads and other divers tend to use what's called a, kind of a floating platform. They'll usually go into the different islands and they'll just start kind of building stuff together. Um, but another thing they do, because a lot of animals are kind of lazy, is if there's a muskrat hut or a platform already there, they'll just start building on top of that. So that's kind of what we're trying to mimic with these structures. It's kind of a muskrat hut or an existing platform. And so just a reminder with projects like this, uh, get out, get involved with your local conservation groups. Uh, you know, make a difference. Uh, if you are in northern Utah and want to join us on the projects that we're doing, I'll link our organization's uh, website below in the description, Wasatch Widgeons. We'd love to have you come out, help us on some projects, and uh, you know, make sure you subscribe to this channel uh, to get updates throughout the summer of how this nesting research project works. Uh, you know, are the redheads, canvasbacks, ruddies using this structure? Uh, kind of our, our report throughout the summer and the nesting season. What we got here is just a PVC square watertight so that it'll float. And we're going to take some natural vegetation as well as we're going to try hit some of uh, the hay that we use on our other structures just to try to help make it a little more robust, try to stop some of that decomposition and make sure that we have a nice sturdy platform. Um, one of the main goals though is to get it in an island that is alive so that as the new vegetation comes up, the birds can pull from that and build on top of what we already have. We're just trying to start a base. We don't expect them to nest in the material we necessarily use, just get started. So we'll grab some cat tails because that's what's around here. We're just gonna try to cover this up and get that base going. All right, so the, the nest structures that we're doing with the redheads, um, basically what uh, we're trying to mimic is something like this. So we got the, got it kind of brushed in, got our platform ready. So we're just gonna throw these on the kayaks. We're gonna go out. And I'm thinking we're gonna go into the middle of that island right there. Not sure if you can see it. Um, gonna place them. We're gonna hope for the best and we'll be back in June to see if we see anything nearby on them. And uh, we might be bringing some shell cameras out to try to get some better pictures, so we'll see. nice and calm back in here it's like a natural windbreak in here
Okay, so we should have plenty of new growth come up around this to help provide some kind of protection, some barrier so that other birds or predators don't see it as easy. We got a platform that they can now start to build off of. I've tried to set it up to where the birds are the most, the way the birds are most likely to come in. They won't be getting tied up on that wire. So ideally they'll swim up. They'll be able to get up on top of this. And as these new cattails grow in, they can pull them over, fold them on top of each other. And hopefully we'll get some ducklings out of this. So the research I've been able to find on redheads and nesting in general is that their ideal water depth is 20 to 40 inches deep. Any shallower and they just don't have the right kind of feed and they just don't feel comfortable. And any deeper you just run into problems with other predators, specifically with fish. Um, probably not a problem here, but we don't have that much water. So, the other things we're looking for is what birds are looking for to nest anyways. Where we're at, the sun will be up over here. So we got plenty of cattails that are going to grow up and create kind of sun shade, keep them out of the sun because middle of June, July, it gets hot. It's going to be 100 plus degrees and in the sun it's just going to bake those birds. They're not going to be comfortable sitting. Um, the other thing we're looking at just to help with the birds be comfortable, make sure the structure sits well, is a nice windbreak. We've got plenty of cattails all around us. They should keep this nice and calm. We're not going to get the white caps. The birds should feel pretty comfortable coming back in here and uh, setting up shop. So we're going to give this till about June. We'll be back and hopefully we'll see redheads or ruddies. I've seen ruddies on this pond in June. So fingers crossed. Okay, so that's going to do it for today. Uh, you know, kind of cool, really caught my interest. Uh, when Tate was telling me about this project, I wanted to get in involved with it. Um, so we'll see how well these new nest structures work. You know, we got those nest structures for, for the puddler ducks and uh, geese and wood ducks. And so uh, time to give our diver friends some attention. Uh, see if we can't do something to help increase uh, their nesting uh, success rates and, and get more ducklings out of it this fall. So. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel again. Uh, we'll be bringing you updates. Uh, we, so I just showed you the one structure and how we set it. We're going to be setting about nine different structures this, uh, this spring here and we'll see how we do. Uh, kind of do some experiment. We'll see what works, what doesn't. So anyways, well, we'll catch you on the next one. Uh, make sure to follow up.